Hello, hello, bienvenue, welcome back. I'm Jay, and this is Fangirl Follies. Today I'm going to be talking about the first book in the LGBT series Fallen Angel called Halo. Now, this book was suggested to me by someone, and I read through the description, and I was like, yep, yeah, that seems like something I'm totally down with. And I didn't do any looking into it beyond that. But I probably should have done a little digging, because yes, this is a straight-up LGBT romance, but it's also a lot of smut, which is something that's completely lost on my ace ass. Now, let me be clear, I have nothing against romance novels. But I have to admit that I really do like a little more plot with my stories. Even when it comes to reading fan fiction, I'm there for the plot lines and the characters and the development rather than the overabundance of smut that you seem to find. I rarely read anything that's above a 2 rating. Actually, I rarely write sex myself in my own work. And a lot of people will probably call me repressed and prude, but anybody who actually knows me knows that that's not true at all because I have an absolutely filthy sense of humor. But sex just isn't something I'm all that interested in. But I have to say that Halo had enough plot that it actually kept me engaged with the story. And I admit I am a giant sucker for the rock star and music universes. I mean, I've been writing one myself for years now. So here's the breakdown. Halo, the titular character, has sort of taken over the front man of this already established band that's kind of been in limbo since their lead singer basically walked off the job. It's a huge controversy. The fans are just not happy, and he really needs to prove that he deserves to be there. Then we add in the fact that he suddenly finds himself attracted to a man for the first time in his life, and his chemistry with the lead guitarist Viper is undeniable. So he has a bit of a sexuality and identity crisis, which a lot of us can relate to. This book is about finding yourself in all aspects of your life. I actually really enjoyed that concept, but I really could have done without the constant reminder that the characters were so fucking hot and their dicks were constantly hard for each other. I had a tendency to zone out and skim when things got a little bit steamy because honestly I just didn't care. But I do find this obsession of women with gay relationships and romance to be absolutely fascinating. And I don't know if it's the same thing that men have this obsession with lesbians, and I'm really, really not the person to ask about that. I did have a thought that maybe part of the reason that women are so fascinated with male-on-male -male relationships is that unless you're reading or watching something super weird and kinky, and again, no judgment, you do you, both parties usually get off, which is not something that always happens in the average hetero relationship. Now, I don't know what it's like to be in a gay relationship. I'm not a man. I do not identify as a man. But both parties finding mutual satisfaction is a lot more realistic. But that could also just be my ace brain trying to logic. In Halo, you have popular tropes like the Rockstar universe or an age difference. And Halo is this boy next door. He's determined and lovable, and he has this innocence that you just find endearing. Because you're discovering this whole new world alongside with him. And Viper is the typical bad boy. No bullshit, blunt, experienced. He's sort of part Yoda to part temptation. I love that we're getting this huge wave of LGBT content and media, even if it is kind of weird that a lot of the gay content is being written by women and a lot of the female queer media is being written by men. But face it, we don't read romance novels for the realism. We're in it for the fantasy. We want to live vicariously through these characters and these fantastical worlds. You have a hot and sexy character that is sweeping you out of your ordinary life and into a world of adventure. And more importantly, there is a happy ending. Because let's face it, a lot of female characters and queer characters in legitimate literature, well, they don't get that happy ending. We really don't need another story about the gay kid who committed suicide. That isn't doing nothing to promote a world of equality. We already know how it's going to end, so the story more becomes about the obstacles and the journey to reach that happy ending. 
I do wish that in this book there had been a lot more exploration of friendships and the actual music industry. I really wanted to see Halo struggle with this newfound fame, this new life that he's being thrown into. The book does a good job of introducing all of the major players. The band is fun and believable. Really, it's relationships of boys will be boys. I mean, they're just giving each other shit all the time. It's the world of sex, drugs, and rock and roll, except without the drugs, really. Unless you count the copious amounts of alcohol that everybody ingests. Honestly, I think their drinking games might actually kill someone. The band is actually forced to tackle hurdles that will actually impact their careers and the band as a whole. In other words, there's actually more than one subplot that's wound into the story. It's a slow burn romance that ends in a bang. Literally. Though I do appreciate that the entire story is not them fucking the whole way through. Halo actually does have a crisis, even if he does maybe get over it a little quick. But it actually kept the plot moving along. The story evolved, and the characters evolved with it. We got backstory, and we got history, and it was intriguing. Enough so that I'm actually going to finish the series. The banter was believable, and the dynamics between the characters were fun and engaging. You could actually see a slow evolution. I'm not going to say that this is an absolutely brilliantly written book. I mean, it's okay. It's tropey, and it lacks any real subtext or depth. And I actually kind of hate how this book ends. As I said, it lands on a bang. I mean, they fuck. That's it. It ends on the climax. There is no falling action. There is no conclusion. It's just sex sleep. And that's disappointing because you want to see a hint of their future. Yes, this book does continue with an entire series, but this isn't even a cliffhanger. But honestly, I think that romance books get a really bad rap, one that's completely undeserved. Think of them as modern day fairy tales because that's pretty much what they are. They are fantasy stories that explore human relationships and have a happy ending. Sexual content isn't actually a requirement, and actually, most romance books don't have any explicit content in it. Most of it's implied, if there is any. But let's face it, when any book is written by a woman, and it happens to have a romantic relationship in it, it's automatically classified as a romance book. When written by a man, though, it's considered literature, which is utterly ridiculous. Pretty much what it comes down to is blatant sexism, that women's work is continually undervalued and devalued. Kind of like, you know, Family Guy or superhero movies. Historically, women and the queer community have been excluded in major ways. We rarely have a chance to tell our own stories, in as much as the LGBT community doesn't get a chance either. The characters are usually created to serve the straight white male. Tackling the topic of somebody questioning their sexuality is always interesting because it's something that almost everybody needs to face at some point in their life. And we usually get the story about somebody who absolutely freaks out and the circumstances of their life are fundamentally changed by this sudden realization. But that isn't necessarily the case in the story. And I appreciate that. I appreciate that Halo's situation and circumstances and family life don't actually change because of his questioning of his sudden attraction to a man. I also like that we get to see Viper's mom, who is very open and supporting. But I also like the realism of Halo realizing that his choices, his life, is suddenly going to matter to millions of people. This is going to impact his career. And he's going to have to make this choice on what type of person he's going to be and who he's going to present to the world. The world is becoming a more accepting and understanding place, but it's still so hard for so many people to be open about who they are. And I think the representation of a world where people are free to explore and express themselves is an important step. The world isn't black and white. People come in all shapes, colors, and forms. And you should be free to love who you love. I'm going to give this book a four-star rating. While it's not the greatest piece of literature that was ever written, it is fun and it's engaging and it will make you 
happy. Books you read don't always have to have this heavy-handed metaphor that makes you think. Reading for fun should be fun. So if you're looking for something that you just want to curl up on a rainy day and read, this is definitely it. And I honestly wouldn't be surprised if one day it was turned into a Netflix or an Amazon Prime series. Cheers! Thank you.